Ham Park, home of the Oakland Athletics spring training. The A's are set to take off for Japan later this week, so we came down to catch them just before they left. We will be down here today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, brought to you by Jiffy Loop. They've got you covered. Check out uh, Jiffy Loop Sack on Twitter for all the latest deals. They also bring you the live stream that uh, you can watch right now at khdk.com. Great way to start out the week of broadcasting with A's manager Bob Melvin coming on at 8.40 at the bottom of this hour, 7.35. Scott Bear, NBC Sports California, he covers the Raiders. He joins us each and every week during the season. Uh, he will join us to talk about all the latest Raider moves. Kyle, uh, not trying to poke at you, it's just a fact. The biggest upset in the NBA season as far as betters go. The Phoenix Suns defeated the Golden State Warriors in Oakland last night, which, well, let's just be honest, nobody expected. 115-111, outscoring the the, uh, Warriors 36-31 in the fourth quarter. So uh, a little bit of a comeback win, if you will. The Warriors were down 16. And they and, and they had the league going into the fourth. And I don't know what the Warriors' record is at home when they have the league going into the fourth, but it's probably something like ninety four to you know and one or something stupid yeah. like that. Kyle, had you bet one hundred dollars straight up on the Suns to win last night, you would have walked away with one thousand three hundred and seventy one dollars. Wow. wow. Th- that is the biggest upset based on the money line in the NBA this entire season. Of course, we can start talking about all oh, the Warriors. They're they're done. The Warriors have issues. Blah blah blah. I ain't buying. They haven't any won of it. back-to-back games since February 10th and 12th. Is that true? Yeah. Okay, that's actually really, really. Yeah. They haven't won back to that is, in a month. That that's that bananas. floors me. That can't. What be. What if you actually got on the floor? <laughs> that just doesn't. I trust you, but that does not seem right. They haven't. They haven't had a three-game winning streak. They haven't had a two-game winning. Nope. Streak. Wow. They haven't won back-to-back games in a month. Well, it, it, this listen. The Suns are absolutely terrible. They're really bad. But, but, the Suns have now beaten the Kings, the Spurs, the Nuggets. They swept the Bucks. They beat the Celtics and the Warriors. Yeah, dude, they're on a roll, man. That's pretty interesting when you consider the Phoenix Suns have 16 wins, and that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Almost half of their wins have come against the Kings, the Spurs, and the best teams in the NBA. I like the fact that the Kings, by the way, are I, this is a graphic somebody sent to me. I like the fact that the Kings <laughs> are one of the like last yeah, year. They're above 500, man. Right. Nobody would have been like, oh, the Suns beat the Kings is one that we wouldn't have been in that conversation. So, uh, after the Kings game, I want to get into this a little bit. After the Kings lost, or excuse me, beat the Knicks, there was a conversation between James Dolan and a fan. James Dolan is the owner of the New York Knicks, and as he was exiting the tunnel, one of the, one, one, uh, a Knick fan said, sell the team. And James Dolan says, uh, excuse me, he says, sell the team. And James Dolan goes, come here, and he brings him over and says, oh, well, that's rude. And he goes, that's just my opinion, just an opinion. And Dolan says, no, it's not an opinion. How, how would you like to watch the games, uh, you know, I'm paraphrasing now, how would you like to watch the games from, from, from not here, basically? And then Dolan uh, motions to some security guy named Kevin <laughs> and says, uh, you know, take care of this guy. Kevin says, hold him for me. You'll hold, basically, hold this guy. And, and Dolan says, have fun watching the games at home. In effect, the Knicks fan and listen, this is New York. That's about as nice as you get in New York. Sell the team, followed with it's an opinion. Right. To which Dolan says it's not an opinion. No, actually, James, it's an opinion. That's literally an opinion you that you should, should sell, sell the, the team. team. Is definition of an opinion. And then he, and then he boots the guy. And, and and we'll follow up on this, but basically saying, well, if you tell me to sell the team, you can like that's rude, dude. No, He's hey, soft. James, what's rude is taking. Arguably the biggest landmark franchise in the NBA, running it absolutely into the ground, giving fans no hope whatsoever over uh, well over a decade, if not two decades, and charging exorbitant prices. I don't have a problem with any of that. I don't have a problem with anything James Dolan has done. As a sports fan, I do. I don't have a problem with, with anything he's done other than banning fans for not liking him. 
because the Knicks are the most valuable team in the NBA. The get-in prices to go see the Kings and Knicks uh, I was seeing on StubHub. Outrageous. 300 bucks a person. Outrageous. They're regularly up there in memorabilia. When I was out there a few years ago, mm-hmm. even like I <laughs> – even like a media person mm-hmm. who has a ticket hookup gets charged like 125 bucks. That's a insane. I, I'm split here. Number one, how soft is that? And I feel like Adam Silver should step in behind the scenes and say, dude, you, you, you can't ban fans for that. Mm-hmm. Number two, anybody in sports, maybe with the exception of a couple teams, maybe like if you're a Redskins fan, I understand that. But if you think you have a bad owner, Thank God it's not James Dolan. Yeah. Listen, Vivek has had his missteps along the way. He has never, ever, ever been anti anything but pro fan. The- he, he always has at least wanted to win, and he seemingly learned a lot of lessons. He was never malicious, never mean, never mean spirited. Right. You got a guy like James Dolan who you just you can tell fans are coming no matter what. I don't care. Screw you guys. I think owner fans can deal with owners who are incompetent. Mm-hmm. Fans can deal with owners who are jerks. Sure. You can't deal with an owner who's an incompetent jerk. Nope. And that's, I think, the biggest issue with Dolan is, is okay, yeah, he's run the Knicks directly into the ground and then beyond that. But he has just had so many public issues outside of that. Yeah. That – that, like you said, at some point, when does Adam Silver step in behind the scenes and go, dude, fix this, like, figure it out? I would put, if I had to guess, and this is irresponsible, if, I, if, I, if you told me some NBA owner is going to get booted for activities outside the NBA, James Dolan would be number one on my oh, list. Oh, I think Cuban would be mine. Uh, that's actually not a bad, bad point. But Dolan, it, Dolan's a close. Dolan, Dolan's up there. Dolan's in the discussion. Dolan just seems slimy to me. I... I'm wondering because there's there's basically that KD's ticket is punched there, uh, Kyrie's maybe, ticket is, maybe, maybe. is punched there. We've heard no, this I know, forever. but that's that's right. the that's the chatter. Right, right. I'm wondering if stuff like this deters them at all. Oh, you would hope so. Like, you are would they looking at this? So. Are they looking at this and going, "That is a joke"? Like, do you know what? Do you know what these players, especially if you're a player, the things you have to deal with, the things people say to you, yep. and you're not allowed to. If you turn around and talk back. And video gets taken of it. It is a segment yep. for a week yep. about look what it. You can't do that. You're a player. You got to be above that. Da, 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 da. And Dolan's gonna go get a guy kicked out for uh, telling him to sell the team. And we're fine. And and man, eh, that's James trash, Dolan. dude. Now, if, if, if that being said, I think Scott Perry is doing exactly what he should be doing out there. I actually like the Porzingis trade from the Knicks' point of view. They've got an arsenal of picks now. They're gonna almost certainly have a top three pick this summer uh, and possibly a number one pick. For example, if they were somehow able, let, let's just say in a dream scenario, we could be talking next year and the Knicks have Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, and Zion Williamson playing out there, plus cap space, fine. But here's, here's the reason why as much as I can't stand James Dolan, I think he's a pox on the entire sport. This is also where it frustrates me that fans are the way they are. And I get it. There's never really been a fan union. There's never really been an organized group of fans that take action and do something. Honestly, the closest we've had. I'm listening. I'm just going to yeah, take a picture of this beautiful is, view. It is probably in Sacramento during the whole Seattle thing. But can you imagine? Here's the thing with James Dolan. Why should he change? He's got the most valuable team in the NBA. He just had a $1.5 billion renovation for Madison Square Garden, which is the most famous place to watch basketball in all the land. The Mecca of basketball. Mecca of basketball. You... Sell out all your games, pretty much. It's difficult to get in there. Why should he change? Now, what you do, if you can, is you you organize the fans. Uh, if I was on the radio in New York right now, I, I would actually reach out to all my – because they have multiple sports talk radio stations out there – I would I would call like a like a meeting of the minds, you know, like like a old school mafia days, like off 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 the grid. Guys, let's band like together. Like in the Godfather. Yeah, which which Kyle's finally seen. I would have them band together. Oh, that's right, you didn't. What was the one you saw? I've seen all the Rockies. That's right, it was the Rockies on the Godfathers. I would say let's all combine 
and get these fans together and start picketing. Stop the season ticket sales. Stop watching the games. Start picketing their sponsors. That's really the one that hurts them. If you've got a bunch of people in Knicks gear (laughs) outside of their big-time sponsors saying you're killing our franchise, Mm -hmm. start – this is where it gets a little bit hinky – Start actually treating people that go into the games as a union would scabs. Now, this is, this, <laughs> this is tricky because you have kids and stuff going into the games. But you want to publicly shame people for supporting the team. This kind of grassroots thing works in Sacramento, California. I think it worked there, they, too. If you told New Yorkers to do this, they'd be like, yeah, I got to watch my Knicks. Uh, hey, you know what? And if they want to do that, then they deserve everything they get. <laughs> it, 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 if they want to do that and, and they want to just blindly that's sheep their not, way that's through. Why, that's why nobody feels bad for Knicks fans. I just wonder if it's just a lack of organization out there. Mm. Like, why are you guys paying this money to see this continually? Why are you giving James Dolan no motivation whatsoever to change? There's no motivation. You want a winner? Okay, then stop going. That's how you affect change. Stop going. Stop buying stuff. But they just go, I'm going to go to the game. Oh, look at this. Here's a, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, three for madness. Uh, What are we going to talk about here? Niners and Raiders, free agency is going to happen. I'm going to have Kyle take that one because he's a smart football guy. Clay Thompson called out fans. We need to figure out whether or not he was justified. And the Kings Wizards play tonight. We'll figure out who I think is going to win and who Kyle thinks is going to win. And most importantly, the scores. We're back from Mesa, Arizona, Ho-Ho Cam Park. Spring training for the Oakland Athletics brought to you by Jiffy Lube. They've got you covered right here on Sports 1140 KHDK. For Madness brought to you by Fire Wings. 21 different flavors to choose from. Firewings.com. Just wing it. All right, special thanks to Jay Mars back in the studio for doing such a bang-up job and helping uh, bring this broadcast to you. Also, Joe the Engineer out here as well, making everything happen, uh, not only audio-wise, but on the video cast brought to you by Jiffy Lube at khtk.com. When we return from break, see, our microphones are down during the break so we can talk and you don't hear it over the commercials. When we come back, uh, Jay will always tell us uh, you're up. And, Kyle, how difficult for you is it to, when he says that, do you also have to fight the urge not to name another continent? (laughs) <laughs> every time he says Europe, I want to say Antarctica, Australia, Africa. Uh huh. There's another one, North America. Come on. Uh, Asia. South America. How many are we at? North uh, America, Europe, South America, Antarctica. Asia. Asia. Australia. Yeah, Australia. Australia. There's <laughs> one more. The North Pole. Uh, Europe, Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Antarctica, Australia. Oh, yeah, we oh, got boom. It. Got it. Easy. Nice. Question one, I'm going to give it to you. You're the football yeah, expert. Why do me. I even need to deal with this? You're the football expert. Yeah, hell yeah, I am. Uh, what do you call it? Legal tampering season begins? Yeah, legal tampering. Uh, nine, 9 a.m.? Naturally, right as the show ends. Mm-hmm. Uh, Niners, Raiders, uh, give me in that order top free agent priority for each team. It's got to be Earl Thomas for the Niners. Okay. Uh, it just completely changes their secondary. He's the best free safety in the league wow. uh, at this point, even, at, even coming off a broken leg at 30 years old. He's going to get top free agent safety money, and I think the Niners are going to be willing to give it to him to stabilize the back end. Do you want to give secondary. top free agent safety money to a guy coming off a broken leg who's 30 years old? Yes. I'm asking. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Earl Thomas is that good. Okay. He had more interceptions in four games last year than the entire Niners defense did all season. Is that good? It's, it's pretty good. I heard that's well, good. It's not It's not that good because the Niners only had two interceptions. is the worst mm-hmm. number all time, but that's fine. What about receiving core? I think they, I, I the free agent class isn't awesome. Uh, Golden Tate and Tyrell Williams mm-hmm. are the are the two big names there. I don't think that they'll go after a guy like Williams because or or Tate because I think they'll get priced out of them. Is there and fire? I don't to the think s- they prioritize receiver that 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 high. Is there fire to the smoke for Odell Beckham Jr. to the Niners? Uh, Dan Graziano of ESPN actually re- reported today that the Niners and Browns are both interested, but the Giants haven't had any talks about it. I think if the Giants are going to trade Odell Beckham, they don't want to. Right. It's not something they're just – if somebody – if the Niners say, hey, have our next five first-round picks, sure. <laughs> uh, the Giants might do it. But any trade the Niners are making for Odell Beckham will have to involve Odell Beckham and the number six pick for, like, the number two pick or something like right. that. Right. Uh, and I, that's, a, that's a lot going on. If those talks aren't already happening, it's hard to see that. And they're probably not trading Nick Bosa. Right. right. That's – 
That's right, and that's you get into team building philosophy, right? At that point, and uh, what what they prioritize, and I'm not sure <coughs> they prioritize receiver. You okay? And, yeah, I'm okay. okay. I'm just choking a little bit. All right, question. They prioritize receiver like that, and for the Raiders, uh-huh. watch out for Le'Veon Bell, dude. Okay, why is he like? Here? Would, is he here? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he's here, and he has a vendetta <laughs> wow. against you. Wow. Okay. No, I just, I, I think it would be. I, I've seen chatter about this, but it wouldn't surprise me if <laughs> if the Raiders just backed a Brinks truck up for Le'Veon Bell and said, "Hey, let's try yeah. and just recreate the Steelers here, and and see what we can do." They have they have four picks in the first thirty five, so why not unload your your free agent capital on some offensive players and then draft some defensive players. And he's basically a guy without a team right now. So yeah. he's he's rolling around trying to find a home somewhere. You think Mike Mayock at some point picks up the phone, gets a hold of him and says, Le'Veon, my wayward son. Yes. Okay. Question two. Oh, am I doing that one? Mm-hmm. Question two. Is Clay Thompson okay for calling out the snorkel crowd? <laughs> I wrote that. Yeah, snorkel because nice, there's a quiet. Yeah. Uh, that's dangerous when you do that. It's always dangerous when you call your own crowd out. Especially when you blew a 16-point lead to one of the two or three worst teams in the league. Yeah. Like, no, that's on you guys. Like, you don't get to – let's say they wound up winning mm-hmm. and the crowd was just super dead and they were hitting some big shots late. Mm-hmm. And Clay said, you know, would have liked to have, you know, that Oracle crowd, you know, behind us, behind us for that. Uh, but coming out after you, you blow a huge lead to a bad team, like you don't get to point to the crowd, man. That's not why you lost. What about the crowd woman? You don't get to the point to the crowd, comma, man. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> At the same time. That's, that's, that's just so trash, especially when, when Oracle is so is, – is widely known as one of the loudest arenas in the NBA when it, when it gets rocking. He also went on to say – what I found was very interesting. We're gearing up for this playoff run. It's tough to stay motivated at this point of the season. Yeah. We need the crowd in here. Do, 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 is that a secret? Uh, it, it's not. And and you know, you talk about how loud the Oracle crowd is, and you've seen this phenomenon where when it gets going, it's awesome. But you also have a situation since they got good where prices have skyrocketed. You have a lot of the diehards that are priced out. and It's a lot of executives that are down below near the court, sure. near a lot of those microphones. It's a little bit of a different feel. Here's what you do, Clay. You leave that to the talk show hosts in San Francisco. Correct. The, it, it's their job. Yes. Now, now, I say, you know, I can go on and say, hey, Kings fans, uh, let's try to be back in our seats in the third quarter because mm. they, they get killed in the third quarter at home generally because everybody's right. out in lines, and it's good natured. Now, if uh, name, you know, uh, I'll take the one least likely to say, but Costa like Kufis, for example, would mm. never say something like this. But if he was like, guys, you, you got to be in your seats, man. Come on. Like, what the heck? What the heck? So you're saying other Kings players are likely to say something like that. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Question <laughs> number three. Kings, Wizards, who you got? <sighs> I hope we change it up this time. Because you notoriously pick against the Kings mm-hmm. to lose by like a lot. A lot. Like 180 to 55. It worked on the, on Saturday morning. Sure. Yeah, My did. score was off. It was. Wizards have a really good Stop. home record. They're, I mean, oh. they're 19 and 12. Oh, my God. It's a decent home record. Are they 19 and 12 or better? Uh, what are they? Uh, or maybe that's the Kings. Yeah, no, they're nineteen and twelve. <sighs> However, the Kings, I, I think that next game was a weird game because it was at nine a.m. They've now had a chance. They got to Washington. It's just a couple hours away by train. Not that they were on a train. They, they've been in Washington for a couple of days now. They're rested, uh, and they understand how important this game is. I, I, I think they understand it's it's a must win if they have any shot at the playoffs. And I think they believe they have a shot at the playoffs. So I'm going to go Kings. I don't need to be terribly high scoring. I'm going to go Kings 115, Wizards 155. <laughs> because I think in this case, Kyle, keeping it within 40 points, moral victory. Moral victory for Sacramento. I think the Kings win 108-104. Oh, low scoring and that close. sneaking one out, yeah. You're sneaking one out? Yeah. Okay, I will leave the studio during the break. When we come back... 
Scott Bear, or he is going to join us from NBC Sports <laughs> so California. Dumb. It is NBC Sports California. We will talk about the uh, Antonio Brown acquisition. Kalechi Assembly no longer a Raider. They've got themselves a new member of the themselves a new member of the defense. And uh, did Mike Mayock get all A's in his first big move as the GM? Of the Raiders, a lot of national pundits say so. Let's see what a local pundit has to say. The drive is live in Mesa, Arizona, Hoho Camp Park, home of A's spring training with Bob Melvin joining us at 840. Scott Bear next, Sports 1140 KHDK. My dad is what I like to refer to as an auxiliary program director. He watches the show every day like a good dad. He does what he can. And one of his suggestions was to switch the microphones from the right side to the left side of our faces uh, because our right side of our faces is the one facing the, uh, the, the, the video camera, which you can watch the stream with the beautiful Ojo Cam Stadium in the background. And, uh, and now, as, as Kyle waits until we're back on the air to switch it around, so that's the, the, the noise you hear, which is funny. It's funny you do that now that I mention this, Kyle, because... See, during hey, during this, the break, I, this is so uncomfortable for me. See, I brought this up during the break. I said, "Hey, my dad had a great idea. You know, good observation. We should sw- switch the mics to the opposite side of our faces." To which you said, "Tell your dad to shut up." And that's I, not I was, what I that, said. That was no, offensive to me. No, that's not what I me. said. Okay, fine. You want to play that game? We can do that. So you <laughs> Scott's said, ready to go. No, you said that your dad has never had a good idea that before. That is not. That is a lie. Week, and I said, "You do that not is a talk lie. about your dad like that." That is a lie, and I don't like it. By the way, Bob Melvin's going to join us at 8.40 today. Yeah, he is. Uh, our good friend Fernando down here, who's making everything happen, just uh, just gave us our lineup for Wednesday. Yeah. Lou Trevino, Sean Murphy, Robbie Grossman, Matt Williams. Outstanding. Wednesday's going to be huge. But today is huge, not just because we're in Arizona, Kyle, not just because we're talking to Bob Melvin at 840, but we are honored to have our dear friend who joins us every single week during the season and then promised to join us. He was, he's true to his word during the offseason if anything happened. And my goodness, did things happen over the last uh, few days for the Oakland Raiders. Scott Bear of NBC Sports California is back with us. Scott, it's Dave and Kyle. Thanks for getting up uh, on this beautiful Monday morning. How are you? Oh, <laughs> I forgot. I completely forgot. You've got uh, you've got new members of the household. You, dude, you're not sleeping at all, are you? Better end of the stick. My wife did the, uh, you know, did, did the early, did, did the wee hour shift. So uh, I'm in better shape than others. But I'm gonna have to start getting used to it because guess what? Uh, the East Coast, three hours ahead, so when the Schefters and Rappaport and the New York ites on the eastern seaboard start firing away that Le'Veon Bell has 31 teams interested to drive that market up, uh, i got to be ready to react. How much, how much uh, are you buying the report that the Raiders are ready to shell out the money that Le'Veon Bell is going to want? Uh, you know, I, I'm to the point now, this is, um, I guess, been more than a full year under John Gruden watch, and uh, I've learned that anything is possible. Uh, expand your mind, man. Uh, it, it's really it's really something to behold. Uh, they can give $50 million to a 31-year-old wide receiver. I think they got a great trade. They can trade Khalil Mack and Amari Cooper, so... Why not, when you got a bunch of holes, go spend $15 million bucks on a running back? I mean, is he a perfect scheme fit? Yeah. Uh, am I going to write something about Le'Veon Bell possibly coming to the Raiders because of everything I just told you? Uh, and the main theme is, what the heck, why not? Uh, yeah, they're going to be players, but there's going to be lots of players, and Le'Veon wants a lot of money. So whether that works out, TBA, uh, but they're going to poke around. Uh, they're going to see what's up with him. Scott Bear joining us from NBC Sports California. We'll get back to Antonio Brown, but lost in the shuffle a little bit. Not the only move uh, the Raiders have made. I'll ask you first, Kalechio Semele to the Jets. Uh, grade that move, and is that part of something else they're doing? I think so. That's about clearing the decks a little bit in terms of cap space. Kalechio uh, was an all-pro in 2016, and he was a road grader and a leader of a once-dominant offensive line that was heavily um, 
paid or well paid. And I think what the what the fact of the matter is, is they are paying that interior line between Jackson of Semele and Hudson, I don't know, ballpark twenty eight million bucks, right? That's too much for three interior linemen when you have so many issues everywhere else. And they wanted to kind of realign where their money is going. Um, in terms of the salary cap, Kelechi has been good, was hurt a bit last year. Uh, he's dropped 30 pounds. He played 2016 at 230. He's tipping the scales at 296 right now. At 330, he's tipping the scales at 296 right now. Um, you know, he's getting healthier and leaner, um, you know, but I, I think that they looked at that and saw uh, somebody who may not have been worth the, the freight. They were probably going to cut him if they didn't get a deal. So I'd say getting anything back uh, is a positive. And uh, when it comes to taking $10.2 million off the, uh, uh, you know, off the cap, that's a benefit. And we don't know exactly how much Antonio Brown's going to make in the first year. But if we're ballparking it, if we're taking away Antonio, we're adding Kelechi, and we're taking away how much it's going to cost to pay all those draft picks, they're sitting right in the mid-50s. Uh, which is not a bad place to be as you enter free agency. So they re-signed Jonathan Hankins. They have Maurice Hurst and P.J. Hall on the interior of that defensive line. Is it, Do you see them focusing on, on finding some, some outside pass rush, some guys on the edge in, in this year's draft? Yeah, if that's... If we're looking just at, at, at need, that I think clearly edge rusher... They don't, and they don't need just one. They need two. And I was a big proponent of signing Brandon Graham from the Philadelphia Eagles. Maybe kind of a blue collar guy that does all the right things. He signed an extension. And as we've seen with uh, Frank Clark and Jadevian Clowney and D. Ford and Demarcus Lawrence, uh, the edge rushers are flying off the board because, as John Gruden said, good pass rushers are hard to find. So when you got one, you know, keep it. Not like I'm still talking about something that happened six months ago, but uh, <laughs> they need a couple. And you nailed it, right? Like, go get one. Uh, they would absolutely fall head over heels and skip to the podium if Nick Bose is still around. I don't think he gets past the Niners at two under any circumstances unless they trade. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think he gets past the Niners. Um, which leaves a couple of options for you. Um, Quinnen Williams is a guy that I, that just fascinates me. And I know he's on the defensive interior. I think if, if he's available and I've tweeted this, I think he goes off the board there. Despite the fact that you look at their depth chart, they have a lot of options inside and they have Arden key and Arden key uh, off the edge. <laughs> Uh, Scott Bear of NBC Sports California joining us. So back to uh, Antonio Brown. I've read here and there that this will now uh, kind of be uh, an informal or maybe even a formal tryout uh, for Derek Carr. They, they get him Antonio Brown. They, they want to see how Derek Carr can do downfield. In, in your opinion, it, A, is that accurate? And B, is that fair to Derek Carr only in the sense that they have Antonio Brown? They're going to still need to help out that receiving core a little bit. And I think they will. I, I think they're going to spend a lot of effort and capital on um, trying to Improve his skill players. I mean, the, 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 the receiver spot needs a complete positional overhaul. Jared Cook, pretty great odds he's going to be packing a bag um, ahead and somewhere else. And we don't know what's going on with the running back situation. And I do think that Derek Carr has uh, a lot of reasons why it was tough to truly evaluate his performance last year in his first year in the system. Terrible receivers, uh, hurt running backs, all those types, and an inconsistent offensive line. This is this is the big pivot year, uh, because after this year they can cut him for five million bucks in dead money, and there's no guarantees left uh, over the course of the last three years of his deal. So, and this well, John Gruden is still early in his second tenure, and he's made it very clear with his actions that. He wants to set himself up for the start of this decade or however long he's here with his guys. He wants control of his cap, and he wants his players, and if that means his quarterback to compete with Pat Mahomes and the Chiefs, then that's what they need to do. So this is a big prove year. Getting Antonio Brown is a, is a major and a key first step. I think it also, 
Okay, let me backtrack. Derek Carr was always going to be the starting quarterback in 2019. Just was, right? Unless they got some crazy offer from the Giants or something. Um, but he was always going to be the guy, despite all the combine consternation. And the bottom line, saying all that, is this the big push year, right? If he does well and performs 2016-esque, great. Carry on with a relatively cheap contract for a quarterback. If not, then you can go find your guy, like that Justin Herbert kid from Oregon or whomever, and, uh, and you can go out and you can bring in a young quarterback with a lot of help around him. So, yeah, that's super long-winded way of saying, yes, this is key. Antonio Brown loves Derek Carr. Yeah, Drew Rose now said it's the reason why he came here, and I believe him. Uh, so this is a big moment uh, for number four. Uh, I think he likes the pressure. I think he likes the expectations. Uh, he's, but he is going to have to uh, deliver somewhat uh, downfield um, in order to remain here long term. How much of a role did Mike Mayock play in executing the Antonio Brown trade? Because you mentioned like Gruden's going to do it with his guys and with with his salary cap. How much how much of a role did Mayock play in making this happen? I think it was pretty similar to how Reggie McKenzie operated during some of these big trades when he was the GM. In that, this is John Gruden's vision. It's John Gruden's decisions. He has, like for Amari Cooper, he said, he's really good. We're not just going to ship him for anything. If you can get a first-round pick, you do it. And that's sort of where Reggie is. He's the liaison and uh, primary negotiator when it came to those things. Drew Rosenhaus said yesterday, and I'd heard before that Mike Mayock was the kind of the lead negotiator in that, understanding full well that they have salary capologists, if that's a thing, uh, that, that help them through the financing. Um, so there's an army of people that are helping Mike Mayock deliver the information. Uh, so a lot of that is similar to what Reggie did. Um, I think the difference here, and I, I mean, I'm not in the room, you know, my, you know, all those cameras that I set up throughout the facility, they're a little, they're a little iffy when it comes to the signal. Uh, but, but, but nonetheless, uh, Mike Mayock's voice and uh, determination to uh, impact how they work and his influence on John Gruden, which is important, uh, is pretty strong. And he was pretty hardline from what I'm hearing in terms of, of the negotiation of not giving up any first round picks. The fact that they got Le'Veon Bell and they kept all four of the picks in the top 35 is worth a kudos bar, man. It just is. That is astonishing. If we were sitting here talking today about that, they got Antonio Brown for 50 million bucks and the 27th pick. I'd probably have a different opinion right now. I think they fricking fleeced them. Right, I think it's a great deal, and this fifty million bucks is uh, is going to be off the books before they ever even imagine the possibility of extending Gary and Conley, which is nutty as it sounds, is the next possible homegrown extension candidate. Right, so uh, so that's sort well Carl Joseph maybe, but that's sort of where we are. Right, so my point is, great job, and I think that Mike Mayock had influence in it. And I think that he and John Gruden are going to work well together. There is something to be said for this hire in the uh, intensity with which Mike Mayock works, his commitment to the craft, and the fact that I think I've said this on the show before, he revs at the same RPMs as John Gruden. Uh, that's vital. Yes, he's more of a draft guy. I think he will have influence and he will have say. And maybe keep the Raiders on message when it comes to, and be disciplined when it comes to executing major transactions like the one they just completed on Saturday night. Scott Bear of NBC Sports California joining us. You know, obviously major on-field implications. Antonio Brown's arguably the best receiver in the game, but also uh, was reading something where where they were talking about the billboards in Vegas and John Gruden's the only guy on the billboards because, quite frankly, you just don't know who the heck's going to still be there. Once they they moved there, <laughs> you know how much of this was also uh, part of that. Uh, the excitement for Vegas, they they I, I imagine would be comfortable throwing AB on those billboards. And you're talking about a, an extremely extremely marketable guy who becomes really the biggest superstar on the Raiders, whose star has moved beyond uh, NFL football in some aspects too. He he seems to very much fit the uh, the bright lights of Las Vegas. 
1,000%. And I was trying to argue this point uh, live on air uh, yesterday and with a person who really thought the trade was garbage. And I mentioned all those points. And whatever you can say about how much Antonio Brown is going to contribute to uh, to a competitive Raiders team once they complete this rebuild, of which there are many needs. And I kept saying exactly what you just said. I wish um, I could have had you on my team uh, yesterday. But the bottom line is it has a lot to do with that, right? And it has a lot to do with, um, with, with being interesting and relevant in their last year in the East Bay, whenever that stadium deal gets signed. Uh, uh, maybe the 15th, likely the 15th, probably the 15th. Uh, but anyway, so uh, <clears throat> all those things are important. And yeah, you can put him on a billboard in Las Vegas, and he's going to fit everything vegas and Antonio is going to like getting 13% of his paycheck back when his state taxes go from uh, that number I mentioned in percentage to zero. So uh, for all those reasons, yes. And so I think it's three things. One, he's really good, and, and it was a good deal. Two, put him on a billboard and on a season ticket and get people here and everywhere excited about the old-fashioned big play potential of the Raiders, right? And then, and then you know, number three is that, you know, you help evaluate your quarterback and you satisfy the impatience constantly burning inside of John Gruden's chest, meaning like he understands he has to be disciplined to execute this rebuild. But come on, man! Like, do we got to go four and twelve again? Do we got to go, you know, six and you know whatever? I can't do math right now. Six, you know, like okay. six and ten. Uh, that that John Gruden hates that incremental change, right? And Antonio Brown at least offers the fast the fantasy of quick and worse to second <laughs> type of uh, rebound. And so I think that and Le'Veon Bell uh, will certainly uh, whet that appetite, whether it's the fantasy lasts for 48 hours till he signs with the Jets, or maybe throughout the rest of the year. I don't know. Uh, but nonetheless, it happens with all those three things. And uh, that's what makes him interesting. That's what makes the trade uh, good because they didn't give up enough. I, I don't have a bad thing to say about it. I really don't. Uh, he'll be interesting. The blonde mustache, the social media videos. I'm going to have to pay more attention to Instagram Live than I ever cared to. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I'm excited about it, and I think it's a good move for them. With legal tampering opening at 9 a.m. today, like you mentioned earlier, we talked a little bit about Le'Veon Bell, but who are some of the other maybe big names you expect the Raiders to be attached to uh, early on? Yeah, I think the big splash signing has already happened. Three years, $50 million. Right. That's a lot. Um, you know, in, in terms, and I think whether they got Antonio or not, I don't think they were going to treat free agency like they did last year, where it was like, uh, let's, let's go to Costco, right? Buy in bulk. Um, I, I think ultimately this is going to be a different year where they kind of hope to, to, uh, to have some laser-guided focus and get some younger guys who can uh, help with the rebuild. Mike Mayock said that. I believe him. It makes perfect sense because they're so close to Vegas now. Um, uh, in terms of big names, I look at that free safety market as a perfect opportunity to sign somebody that can be a leader in a young secondary and help right away. Uh, <clears throat> There's lots of good names out there. I was partial to Eric Weddle, one of my favorites I've ever covered, ever. Um, he's already off the board to the Rams. A guy like LaMarcus Joyner, haha, Clint Dix, uh, Tashawn Gibson, maybe is a better fit for the 49ers, but I think he's really good. Uh, so I think a safety could definitely help. Um, I think they're going to address maybe right tackle through the draft again. Um, you know, uh, Levy on Bell, obviously uh, an option. I'm trying to rack my brain now. Uh, middle linebacker, maybe not at the C.J. Mosley level, but I think that you can definitely go out um, and get, you know, somebody there. Uh, so, you know, in terms of massive names, maybe not too many. Edge rushers, I think it's going to be difficult because they're going to be so expensive. I, I would anticipate, I've been wrong before, but I would anticipate them being out on a guy like Trey Flowers Maybe Ziggy Ansah might come here. I've been a big proponent of a guy like Cameron Wake, who I know is 150, but can lead a young group of edge rushers. Um, so I, I, I think that that's it. 140, I, 
Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Wikipedia there. Uh, but yeah, so uh, I think that a guy like that could help, you know, Ziggy Ansa type um, to kind of bridge the gap, get these young guys revved up. Um, and again, you know, it's so tough. You go back to number four, right? You, you asked a while ago. Um, Edge rushers, right? Lots of them. And I agree with that. And it's weird because Bosa, in my opinion, top guy on their board, the Kyler Murray conundrum. Again, you can't rule anything out. You look at Josh Allen, you're like, is he a perfect kid? I don't know. Uh, but hitting an edge rusher. One minute. And then who knows? Again, at 27, I, I, I think uh, is the right way to go to accent uh, some free agents. Uh, again, less volume, uh, more specific targets. Um, and I don't think they're going to spend all their cap space. Ultimately, I think some of it's going to roll over because then they can really use the attraction of Vegas, the, you know, all everything stay tax free and really bring people in. Scott Bear, he's the best. NBC Sports California on top of each and every move the Raiders make. And even more importantly, each and every move the Raiders are likely to make. You can read him at NBCSports.com. Just follow the links and get to their Raiders coverage. And Scott will join us and has joined us uh, every single week during the regular season should other news break. Of course, Scott will be our first phone call. We appreciate you, buddy. Have fun getting absolutely no sleep whatsoever. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Talk right. to you later. Take care. That is Scott Bear, NBC Sports rawr. California. A lot of <laughs> a lot of a lot of interesting stuff uh, he had to say about those Oakland Raiders. We we don't know how they'll be, uh, but we do know uh, they're going to be a little bit more exciting with Antonio Brown. So we'll take a break when we return. What are we going to do when we return? Oh, let's get into your Sacramento Kings. We've got Bob Melvin joining us at 840. And then I'm looking at this lineup, by the way, for Wednesday, Kyle, Yeah. that we just got. My goodness gracious. Uh, we got some peeps coming on. Uh, Lou peeps. Lou Trevino, Sean Murphy, Robbie Grossman, Matt Williams already signed up. When we get back, Kings, Wizards tonight, we'll look at that, that weird game versus the Knicks. And uh, does the NBA need to change its playoff format? We're going to give you some numbers as to why what's going on right now is absolutely not fair to teams like the Kings. And, no, we're not biased in any way whatsoever. <laughs> Back in a couple, Mesa, Arizona, brought to you by <laughs> Jiffy Lou. But we've got you covered at Sports 1140 KHTK. The Grant Mead period. Capital Casino in 30. <laughs> you, you about to sing? Do you need a beat? What you need, Stanley? Mama, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. That's damn right. Don't do it. Don't let them pick a dog and ride in no trucks. Let them be doctors and lawyers. And such. Go yeah, ahead, Stanley. Hey, Stanley, the one thing I know of, we'll never see you on America's Got Talent. That's for sure. Grant and Doug, weekdays from 3 to 7 on Sports 1140 KHTK. You're up. Capital Casino is Sacramento's number one poker room with Limit No Limit Hold'em, Blackjack, Pie Gal Poker, Baccarat, and, of course, my favorite game, Three Card Poker. They've also got the best food and the best service to go with those phenomenal games. Capital Casino, 411 North 16th Street. You know why it's uh, 411, Kyle? Because you get all the good info there. 411 North 16th Street in downtown Sacramento. For more information, hey, just log on to capital-casino.com and please gamble responsibly. 1-800-GAMBLER. Quality First Home Improvement has their march in Do you guys want me to send you the Pekis audio for the play of the game or do you want me to play it from here? Oh, please Hopefully play it from there. Um, and I'll just... 